everyone to the Agile People FICA. Today we are in Stockholm and in the training for Agile uh, Agility in Finance. It's the first time ever we uh, have this training. And uh, it's the first time in the world that we have ICB Finn. Uh, we think so anyway. We think so yeah. anyway. Uh, we have accredited this training with uh, IC Agile and uh, Knut Fallen is with us. He's, he has created this training together with us. So uh, and the people at BBRT and, and uh, of course yeah, the so, so a couple of others, not yeah. just me, but <laughs> BBRT is yeah. uh, beyond yeah. budgeting, so everyone knows that. I can see we have some people online. Uh, if you would like to ask us anything, just try to do that. Uh, but let's start a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm, we're, the intention of this FICA today is to talk about the learnings from the training. So anyone would like to start to talk about what, what was your learnings or maybe your big coin drop this, these days? I think that my learning was the importance of the management team designing a management model that creates the system that we want to have to decouple organizations and to enable agility more. And I think that is often missed, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a system which you don't really know how to lead. Or manage. You know, or yeah. to manage, yeah. Mm -hmm. Manage, actually. Yes. Yeah. I think it's really a better language so that I can talk to different departments and maybe um... It moves in silos in our organization, talk more in, 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 in the whole system, in a way, between HR and finance, um, IT. And so that's probably my biggest problem, I think. Uh, new, new ways of talking about um, what it is. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, one learning I had um, that was strengthened was the, the importance of visualizing um, economic figures and finances so that everybody can understand mm -hmm. because many times you have all these details you have a lot of figures and you can't make any sense of it but making it easy to understand for everybody in the organization by using like bubble diagrams or word clouds or simple graphs and so on line uh, diagrams and such things uh, uh, so that we can spread the financial information to everybody to use it. And that's one of my uh, learning as well. Okay. okay, yeah. I'm a coach. Mm -hmm. I base myself on, on what I do and what I see. And what I see in the beyond budgeting thing area here, except for it, I get some language thing, which is the important part. I see that it enables communication across boundaries. Mm -hmm. So, and also actually sort of from my understanding, it, it, the built intention that you have in assigning and in combining all these three target measuring and, and uh, what was the third now? Resource allocation, combining them into one specific time and space and, and instead iterating and separating them so that you can have the discussions of what we need now compared to where we go instead of just waiting for a year before you can have that discussion possibly that is uh, my coin drop i think yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Knut, I don't know if I said your name uh, wrong in the beginning. No, but, it's okay. No, yeah, but uh, yeah, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is your first time uh, teaching this training, but you have done similar things before, I know. You have also written yeah. a lot of books. You were expecting a bit of an audience of more controllers or yeah. people from that yeah. area. Instead, we are more agile people coaches or agile coaches or HR, uh, HR, HR yeah. persons yeah. as well. So uh, what's your learnings from running this training? Well, I, I think uh, my learning is that it's it's really, really relevant. And what I've done when we designed the course was that we followed sort of the structures from, from IC Agile. And we were we had some critiques against it. And uh, I, I, I learned that my critique was right. <laughs> and I think that I got the improvement to sort of adjust the learning outcomes. And sort of, I think we did it 
fairly good to be in, in this setting. And I've been doing this for Dagens Industri, Dagens Samhälle in Sweden. And I've done it in Czechia, but many years ago. So this is sort of the first sort of time we do it in this kind of formal certification setting mm -hmm. with 17 people from different organizations. Mm -hmm. So that's quite, I think it's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this I, is I, just the starting point. This is just a starting point. And I think we will do it now. We've done it uh, on site and we will do more on site. And we will also release the rem remote version after a New Year's Eve. We have to shoot some films and we have to adjust a little bit of the material. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that's fun. Then we will begin to, to offer this training on a broader scale, let's yeah. say, to everybody. Yeah. Um, and also authorizing more trainers in the world uh, to give this certification. Right. We can also think about different uh, combinations when it comes to, to creating new courses for HR and finance or management and finance or HR management and finance so that we come together because the importance of people discussing uh, and and, and uh, intentionally designing the management model and yeah. the business model exactly. uh, as instead an of just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as an enabler for, for creating the company that we want, yeah. right? Uh, um, another thing that, that I thought was interesting was, was the decoupling of different things. Yeah. And there were three uh, examples of decoupling, I yeah. think. Well, somebody wanted to decoupling of the organization is one mm -hmm. decoupling of the sort of traditional budget process mm -hmm. into three processes and that has been well known and, and tested and that's what most organizations do and and if you but if you decouple the organization as well you have a lot of flexibility but still you have boundaries of course mm -hmm. but you have to sort of design that model with the different techniques methods tools mm -hmm. and that will also uh, empower uh, everyone in the organization mm -hmm. and that will then also uh, create a better culture mm -hmm. uh, for people to work there for managers mm -hmm. to to work there and for customers finally and owners so so it's it's really about performance and, and how do you create that kind of environment mm -hmm. that is fit for purpose mm -hmm. uh, and and not using the old traditional 1922 model since yeah, we talked about that as well, that the management model is is often not well known about, and it most of what, what we call management today was designed in the early 90s, 1920s, 1930s, the 20th century model, and we have to redesign that to enable agility. I think yeah. back to to is it uh, sorry? Uh, I think Nina. No, uh, no, no. I was just listening to you, and you're talking a lot about management and managers. Yeah. And I'm thinking I would have loved to hear more about leadership. Yeah. Um, because I think that we we uh, we need more and more leadership principles yeah. there, uh, in addition to management. And I think if more managers could flip around and think like leaders rather than managers, I think we would get a long way. That is probably just because uh, of my sort of way of of talking, and I I mean leaders, mm -hmm. uh, but I say managers, so it's it's. Uh, and I will improve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Andres, you had some. I was just thinking you. that what you were talking about, Knut, is more or less, is it principle number five in, in the agile principles behind the manifesto? Mm -hmm. Build the environment and then trust people to get the job done. That's more or less yeah. what you're saying. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so decoupling, and, and the third kind of decoupling that we touched on was this you don't have to uh, couple together a challenge thing with controlling, yeah. but but and many yeah. companies do that it's yeah. almost the same thing we are basing the budgets on the accounting yeah. uh, and, and we don't have to do that no. uh, we can actually see them as a bit separate yeah. things and uh, we can create the, the budget model as we please instead of always basing it on this old 1922 model that yeah. you talk about mm -hmm. uh, with, with uh, this is what we want to happen and then we follow up on that and then we look at the gap and this is of course then bad things it's red figures the gap are the gaps are always red because we didn't predict well uh, we couldn't look into the future uh, and we did wrong you know it's bad <laughs> any questions from online or uh... 
anything you would like to say? Um, I, I could say something, Daniel, if that's all right. Hi, David. Hi, hiya, hiya. Um, so firstly, I just want to say congratulations. It's been the world's first to, to roll this um, certification out. So well done. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying it. Sadly, I couldn't make it. I would have loved to have come over and spent this time. I guess uh, my journey is, and, and some of the points that people have made there, is that sort of three years ago or whenever I came to Agile People, I was the reverse situation. So I'd come from a finance background. And so I was well aware of the, the sort of pitfalls in that that space. And so then to be thrust into, so how, how does HR then figure as well? So and and you kindly over the years have allowed me to sort of see pull back the covers and see HR in in that respect. And so, just taking your point there, absolutely, I don't see any reason why agile, uh, so HR and finance couldn't find a way to join forces. I appreciate sometimes the language and the terminology gets confused and, and and I think I've mentioned this before, you know, everybody's scared of numbers or, or maths or whatever and think that's okay. But you know, nobody's scared of people. Um so you know that that should be a sort of combined effort, I think, or at least an aspiration to to do that going forward. So well done. Thank you. We discussed, about that. We discussed about how can we create cross functional uh, management teams and teams on all levels that are more cross functional working together as their first team and then maybe having the second team is the functional team and because now it's the functional team who is team number one and then you maybe sometimes work together in a cross-functional team but it should be the other way around to to cross fertilize and to be inspired by other parts and understand how we can work together to to be successful as a whole company okay. um, mm -hmm. right. any more questions from online Okay. Uh, uh, we have a couple of ideal people in your foundation and the uh, beyond budgeting. Uh, Nina, you uh, you're from uh, Bodé in the, in the Norway. So, are you thinking of something that you will bring home on mon to, on Monday that you maybe need to invest some time into? And, uh, um, uh, well, Bodé has been working with beyond budgeting for about twenty years. Ah, so, it is like that. Uh, okay. But <laughs> I am really curious now. What is it that Monitor because I know that there's somebody monitoring something, mm -hmm. and what exactly is it that they're monitoring? Mm -hmm. We don't have any budgets, but mm -hmm. somebody's looking at something. So I'd really like to go home and talk oh. to the chief financial officer and ask her, you know, what exactly is it that you are looking at? Oh, thank you. Because it's different things in different kinds of industries, oh, yeah. organizations, and so on. Mm -hmm. But you need to measure different things. Okay. Uh, but many times, maybe they are measuring the old the course schedule. And uh, welcome to the training. Thank you. Yeah, thank and you. next time, right? Yeah. Every week. Next yeah. time. Yeah, it's next Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Next Wednesday. It's okay. See you then. Bye-bye. Thank you